Praise the Lord. Welcome to AGTV Easter Special Edition. I'm Davis Ekasio too, and uh, I'm happy that you're joining us today. Uh, the gospel message of salvation hinges on the fact that Jesus Christ came into the world to die so that we can be forgiven our sins and be accepted by God. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 uh, declares that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Justice, as we know, demands that sin must be punished by death. That's why it's stated in Romans chapter 6 verse 23 that for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So for our sake, God sent Jesus Christ into this world. He knew no sin and He became sin for us so that we can obtain God's righteousness and experience spiritual rebirth. John chapter 3 verse 3 tells us that Jesus Christ, you know, when He, when he spoke to Nicodemus, He told him Nicodemus was uh, one of the Jewish uh, rab uh, rabbi, teacher. But he came to Jesus Christ at night, tried to inquire of him what he should do in order to be saved. Jesus Christ told him, except a man, that is mankind, be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So there is a process which is called spiritual rebirth where the old person, the, the, the old sin nature in you must give way to a new nature, which is a spiritual nature. So I took some time out to interview some people and let them share their salvation experience. Listening. My name is Betty Pretty. I'm from Lesby, Maryland. I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior in Tokyo, Japan in 1973. Well, I was uh, in a very unhappy marriage. I was unhappy with myself. I was depressed, low self-esteem, uh, constantly felt like um, everybody was better than I am, and it was just a, a lack of uh, self-confidence. I had no knowledge about the Word of God, and so uh, I joined a Bible study, and in the Bible study, a guy asked me, he said, Betty, are you saved? And I said, well, he said, are you a Christian, excuse me, first, and I said, well, yeah, you know, I uh, don't commit murder, I haven't stolen anything, I'm, yeah, I'd say I'm a Christian, and he said, well, are you saved? And I said, well, no, I'm a Methodist, and he said, well, the Bible says, and John 3.3 3, that you must be born again and I thought wow anyways I went home that night after he gave me some scriptures I sat on the chair and I said God I don't know about this being saved business but if that if I have to ask Jesus in my heart to get saved and that's what I want and I said by the way if you can do anything with this marriage of mine I'd appreciate it and I went up to bed and I woke up the next morning and the grass was greener and I had become a new creature in Christ and my life has never been the same since my name is Murdoch Davis Jr. and I'm from Herndon Virginia and yes I am saved and I received salvation at the age of 12 in a little town called Tar Heel North Carolina the church was Second New Light Baptist Church I just, I just had a, a pull to know God, and uh, from that pull to know God, I just told my mom and dad the Sunday before that, that next Sunday, I wanted to go up and, and be saved. I wanted to give my life to the Lord. My name is John, and I live in Maryland. Yes, I am saved. I got saved when I went to church, and... And then I got into Christ, and then I, by reading the Bible, 
said my favorite thing to read was For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son That those who believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life My name is Jim Pretty. I'm from Lusby, Maryland Well, I met Christ in 1974 in Tokyo, Japan And my wife and I were married for about 14 years at that time And I always tell people that we just uh, fought to get acquainted Wasn't the most pleasant husband Matter of fact, I tried to uh, run my life like I ran where I worked at. I was in the military, so everything had to be done by the numbers. So I would tell her when to get up and when to sit down. And uh, that doesn't make for a very happy relationship in your marriage. But what happened in Tokyo, Japan, my wife started going to church, and she ended up getting saved, but she never told me. She had turned her life to Christ, now she was loving me. She was loving me like you ain't never been loved, brother, let me tell you. And so as she, her life changed before me, that was a testimony of what God had done. But I didn't know God had done it because she didn't even tell me that she had accepted Christ. Next thing I know, she asked the Bible study to come to the house. And to this day, I don't know why I said yes, but I did. And they came over to the house and the guy after the meeting, he asked me a question. He said, Jim, are you a Christian? I said, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. I don't... Uh, I don't beat my wife, I don't kick the dog, and I said, uh, I'm a pretty good guy. He asked me the next question, he said, that's not what I asked you. What I wanted to ask you was, did you know Christ? And I thought, well, do I? He said, let me share this verse of scripture with you. It's in 1 John 5, 11 and 12. It says, this is the record that God has given us eternal life, and that life is in his Son. He who has the Son of God has life, and he who has not the Son of God has not life. Well, let me tell you something. I surely didn't have the Son of God, but I knew that. And so as God was working on my life, He was changing my life. And He was, uh, I started reading the Bible. And I went back and kept reading that, reading that scripture. Till one night I got on my knees and I said, well, I don't know whether this works or not, but I'm gonna invite Jesus into my life. So that's what I did. And my life, after I invited Christ in, was never the same. God restored my marriage. God restored me to Him, and I tell you what, it's been a blessing ever since that time. My name is Ernest Emma. I live in Manassas in Virginia. I came to know the Lord Jesus in the early 90s. In the early 90s, uh, it was an invitation that somebody gave to me at the university. They were having a program there where I went to, and the Word of God was preached undiluted. And it touched my heart and I went out there when the altar call was made I went out there and knew he was talking to me and so I surrendered my life to Jesus and since then it's not been the same again and I bless the name of the Lord that I had that opportunity and I seized that opportunity my name is sister Ihoma Emerile I'm from Nigeria uh, by his grace I got born again in the year 1991 January what led to my salvation was um, I usually want to go and find things out. I'll just go. I'll go to this prayer house, go to the other one to find it, how things happen. So I cannot get solution for the particular thing I'm looking for. One day, the nine first people were doing a crusade or something. I was passing across where they are doing their fellowship in Federal Polytechnic Ada in Nigeria. So I went in there and I... The Spirit of God touched me and I became born again. I am Jerry Young. I live in Baltimore, Maryland. My wife and I attend church at Faith Christian Church International Outreach Center. I was saved back in 1995. The way it happened is that I attend church here with a friend and I had no intention of getting saved that day, but the Holy Spirit had other ideas. Uh, during that service, I was here, then all of a sudden I, I was overcome by the Holy Spirit. And all I could do was say, yes, Lord, worship God. You know, yes, yes, Lord. Even though my mind itself, the self, was like, what's going on? But the Holy Spirit was talking to my spirit and I gave in to the Holy Spirit. And that's the way I got saved. I set Christ that day. My name is Inye Bauna. I live in Greenbelt, Maryland. 
I was saved in Nigeria 1995. Well, my parents were saved and they so much wanted us to experience Christ's love in a different dimension. And they introduced us to church, Pentecostal church, and we started going to church and then we started to enjoy the fellowship with God. My name is Darren Ruiz. I am from uh, Culpeper, Virginia. Uh, I was saved back on March 3rd of 19, I mean, t uh, 2013. What happened was that, you know, me and my wife were going through the separation and, uh, and I felt that I was losing everything that I had in my life, my wife, my children. So I got to the point where I want to live no more. And, and uh, at that point, you know, I went to work, I had all these thoughts of dying and taking my life out that uh, uh, a Christian lady at my job came and gave me a book called Jesus Calling. And because of that book, you know, started, I started, you know, noticed that Jesus was calling me. And I would say that after that, I just tired of living the way I was living and decided to give my life to Christ. Welcome back. You know, from that testimony is that... Uh those people have shared, you, you see that there was always a time, there's always a moment where you come to realize that I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. I need salvation. I need the Lord. So I, I believe, you know, if, by watching the, the testimony, by listening in, you gain a little bit of the need, of the importance to personally accept Jesus Christ. Sin, as we know, is rebellion against God. Human beings were created by God so we can have relationship with Him. But because of disobedience of Adam, the first man, all, all people all over the world have sinned and are spiritually separated from God. When, when we talked about you know, spiritual death, it not, it's not the physical that is the separation, the fact that we cannot have a relationship any longer with, with God. But that was, the, that was the reason He created man, so, so that He can have fellowship with man. So sal salvation is His personal, personal decision. You, you must, first of all, acknowledge you are a sinner. Believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins. Confess your sins to God. Ask Him to forgive your sins. And accept Jesus Christ. His only begotten Son as your Lord and Savior. So it's a decision to, to repent. Turn away from your old ways, your evil ways. And place your trust in God. And I can assure you that He is able to save you. Deliver you. Preserve you. By His grace. I want to share my own little bit of my salvation story so that you can relate to what the grace of God is. You see, I must have been very naive or plain ignorant about the grace of God. I doubted my salvation when I was about 14 years old due to an experience that wrecked my faith in God. I got saved when I was 12 years old, in 1974. It was the first year of my secondary school at Nigeria, where I was born, which is the equivalent of sixth grade. A schoolmate, you know, shared the gospel with me. She invited me to join the Student Christian Fellowship in our school, which was known as Scripture Union issue, where I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I enjoyed the weekly fellowship, Bible studies, fasting and prayer, and I even participated in several Christian activities within and outside the school. I used to go about, you know, distributing gospel tracts and witnessing, you know, the gospel to my family members and friends. And some of them I accepted, you know, some thought, some thought I was, you know, just being a, a fanatic. That, that's the way some people viewed SU members in those days. That we were too strict, 
we're fanatical. I believe a lot of that has to do with the tendency, you know, to become legalistic. You know, the do's and don'ts, the holier-than-thou attitudes, which turn people off. I was a very committed Christian for the first two years, until the traumatic experience or event, you know, that happened, you know, that, that shattered my faith. I will continue sharing my story, but at this time, I want to invite Pastor Shanti Charles to sing. She's going to sing Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Listen, and also worship along with her. I'll be right back. of God is actually what brings us to salvation. I ask some people to share what they understand by grace. Let's listen in. Grace to me is that, you know, that I couldn't earn my salvation. That there was nothing in my life that I could do to win my salvation. That, you know, that only the blood of Christ is the one that saved me because God gave me grace. God gave me a gift, a gift that I could never repay. Even though Satan comes, comes sometimes and tries to tell us we're, that we, we're not forgiven, you know, we just have to go back in the Word and, and see that the truth is that we have. The grace of God is a gift of God, the ability to be overcomer, to live an overcomer life, even in the midst of 
on righteousness. We have to live a righteous life and overcome sin by the, by the ability of God, not by our own ability. If it wasn't for God's grace, I wouldn't be here. Every morning, His grace is new and fresh. And it, to me, I live by grace. I depend on His grace. He's um, given me so much more than I deserve or could possibly expect. Um, and I'm saved by grace. And it's nothing I do, but I, what I do for him now is because of what he did for me. Grace, by definition, is the unmerited favor of God. And grace is what God grant us that uh, we do not have to work for salvation. It's the favor of God that all men are created equal based upon the acceptance of Jesus Christ, the gift that God has given to us. The Bible tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that who shall ever believe in him shall be saved. We are saved by grace and not by works. That's what the Bible says. But we need to understand that grace has two dimensions. There is the saving grace and there is also the enabling grace. The saving grace that we are saved with is a saving grace that cleans out our sin. The Bible said our sin he will remember no more. Grace is something that I can't earn. It's something that Jesus Christ has given to me. He, he's given it to me freely and through grace I'm able, I'm able to be saved. I'm able to have a connection to God. I'm able to go straight to God in prayer because of that grace from Jesus Christ's death. What caused my life to spiral down from being a committed Christian who loved the Lord Jesus Christ to becoming a rebellious young man and a backslider. First of all, let me share with you some of my experiences before being saved. I was exposed to immoral behavior at an early age by an older cousin who lived with us. He was very sexually active and knew how to have his way with women. And by hanging out with him, I became, you know, my behavior changed and I started behaving like him. So when I got saved, I worshiped at a church that laid emphasis on walking in holiness and righteousness. When my pastor got a teenage girl in the church pregnant and tried to cover it up by encouraging her to abort the baby and in the process she died I was disappointed confused so devastated by what happened that I stopped attending church and soon plunged you know into destructive lifestyles you know I started skipping classes you know joined a group of tough guys who we go out, you know, to places that we used to call joint, you know, to drink and uh, smoke marijuana and, you know, create troubles in school. And of course, being that my father was a teacher in that school, I, I never escaped punishment. Most times I, I was caught and disciplined and punished, but that did not deter me from continuing in that lifestyle. But before I share what happened, you know, that brought the turning point uh, in my life, in 1983, where I had a, an encounter with God by His mercy, by His grace. Let's listen, listen to some people sh talk about their struggles with sin and how they deal with it. Well, you know, I don't think as Christians we ever will get to the point where we're not attacked by the enemy. Remember, <clears throat> Satan's game plan is come and kill and destroy. And as Christians, we need to walk the life as a Christian victoriously. Most people don't because they don't know how to stand upon the Word of God. And the Word of God is very clear. And as you apply the Word of God in your life, as you learn the Word of God, as you live the Word of God, you'll recognize those times when Satan is kind of throw things at you. So I think uh, every believer uh, has to struggle uh, with living a life that would be pleasing unto Christ and the Word of God and prayer. But what helped me more than anything 
was when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. When I received the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, let me tell you, that changed my life. Up until that time, I never shared with anybody that I was even a Christian. But when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues, I'd go over and talk to a stump if it would listen to me. So I know that by having the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, it gives you victory. It gives you the, th- the power you need to live the Christian life victoriously. It does not mean that uh, uh, you are perfect without the ability to commit sin, but you have the Spirit of God inside of you that any time you commit sin, the Spirit of God pricks you. And so that's why the Bible said, if we self say we have no sin, we lie. But let God be true and let every man be a liar. But if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And so the enabling grace by the Spirit of God as we yield our life to Him, we God will give us the ability to be obedient to the word of God will give us the ability to keep God's commandment. It will give us the ability to live a life of righteousness. So nobody is perfect. We fall here and there, but God gives us the ability to come back to him. I believe that I'm perfect through Jesus Christ. Um, scripture talk, talks about us being perfected through, through him. It's not my perfection that I'm able to overcome sin. It's through his perfection and and him dying for me that now I believe that I'm a righteous person and I'm perfect before God because Jesus Christ's blood covers me so what God sees when he sees me he sees the blood of Christ I believe that we we received the power to overcome sin simply because uh, salvation was a gift and because of that gift now I can boldly go to the throne and ask for forgiveness if, if, if sin has even tried to come into my, my life, my thought life, even my physical life. And even the Bible speaks of that all sin was taken away when Jesus Christ died on the cross.